The young fellow you're looking at is Timothy Trent. He's fine now, but yesterday he had a brush with death. It all happened one morning when Timothy set out upon a journey of discovery. And although the entire journey occurred inside his own home, he encountered some very tempting and very dangerous things. Timothy. Say hello to Judy. I've got some presents for you. Oh. Look. Good grief. Right in his mouth. Just like with everything else he touches. Well, he's at that age, isn't he? I'll say. He's into everything. <laughs> oh, before I forget, let me get you that book I was telling you about. Oh, yes. Yeah. Jimmy, yeah. you stay right here. Mommy will be right back. I think it's over in the kitchen. I'm not really sure where I left it. Timothy had been fed and tended to and shown off to a neighbor. Now he began to examine his surroundings, and that's when temptation struck. There on the coffee table stood a new object. To Timothy, it was suddenly the most magical thing in the world. Timothy didn't even try to resist. He set out to get it, and that's how his travels began. Well, what do you do with a magical object? For one thing, if you're Timothy's age, you put it in your mouth. But nothing came out. The safety cap was too much for him. Timothy quickly lost interest. Besides, there were new areas to explore. In the dining room, for instance, he didn't understand that the safety cap saved him from swallowing the dangerous liquid. Still, cap or no cap, the lighter fluid was there in Timothy's reach. In any case, the travels of Timothy Trent continued. At last, he paused to look around, and there it all was before him, scouring powder, drain cleaner, and other wonders. But one object caught Timothy's eye. Timothy's attention soon turned to other things, which is just as well, considering what remained there in the kitchen cabinet. Not long ago, Timothy's father installed a padlock on the kitchen cabinets. There. Oh, great. That ought to do the trick. Thanks, honey. At least that's one place that Timmy won't be able to get into. But locks do no good if they're left unlocked. Just as safety caps left off aren't safe. Meanwhile, Timothy Trent's journey continued. Next stop, the hall cabinet. It had become a catch-all for many household odds and ends, like that bottle of furniture polish. It was very inviting to Timothy, but fortunately, the safety cap kept him out of it. That bottle of furniture polish could have ended Timothy's travels with heartbreaking suddenness. Oh, hi, Timmy. What in the world are you doing in the hall? 
Hello, Timothy. Oh, there's the phone. Help yourself to a cup of coffee, Judy. Okay. Are you being a good boy? There was more excitement awaiting Timothy through the bedroom door. Another temptation. Oh, sure. Uh, hold the phone a second, Marge. I don't see Timmy. Let me check on him. Timothy, what are you doing? No, put those down. Oh, Timmy, I just can't believe your grandmother left her pills here yesterday. Come on, young man. You come in with me. Hello, Marge. I'll call you back in a little while, okay? Here, let me stay down. Well, what happened? Oh, my mother stayed overnight with us last night, and she left the pills on the nightstand. Well, you know how careful we are with medicines around Timothy. He always copies everything we do, so we never take medicine in front of him. And they say you should never call medicine candy. Oh, I know that, yeah. Timothy didn't care much for the conversation. He was continuing on his journey to a glittering world of bright colors, gleaming chrome, and up there, high above, Timothy Trent, young and full of curiosity, is doing just what you'd expect. But there's no safeguard here. Timothy was there when his father told the pharmacist, Say, Henry, can't I get this stuff without the safety cap? I had trouble with a couple of these a while back. Yeah, well, some people have trouble with them. But safety caps are actually pretty easy, if you take the time to read the directions. And it gets even easier with practice. But there's such an inconvenience. But, Dan, isn't the safety of your child worth a little inconvenience? Sure, you can get the non-safety caps, but it doesn't make sense for anyone who has close contact with young children. Besides, the option is really for the benefit of the elderly and the handicapped. Don't worry, Henry. My wife and I always keep a close eye on Timmy. It's a good kid. Yeah. You have to be careful. Well, that's why we put the lock on the kitchen cabinet. Uh, well, who is that child off to now? Dear. Timmy, what in the world? Oh, my God. Timmy. Judy. Judy, oh, Dr. Arnold's off. Oh, honey. Dr. Arnold, I'm calling for Mary Trent. Here she is now. My son just swallowed some liniment. What should I do? I don't know how much. Yes, just a few minutes ago. Uh, the label says methyl salicylate. Okay. Yes, right away. Oh, oh, and thank you, doctor. The doctor says to make him vomit and to get him to the emergency room as quickly as possible. So ended the travels of Timothy Trent. But there will be other journeys. Journeys that can be made safer for Timothy by those who love him. Timmy, you gave us quite a scare yesterday. And a boy, is that good? Well, I certainly can see the sense of having child-resistant caps if you have a baby in the house. But uh, Harold and I, well, that's not necessary for us. No? Well, what about when I leave Timmy with you when I go shopping? And what about when your sister's children visit you? Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Here. Yeah. There we go. I 